first episode of Hawaii Sunrise, a show about Christians making a difference in the island community. We have an exciting show for you today. Come join us. Learn what's happening right in your own neighborhood. Aloha. Welcome to Aloha Stadium, the 10th anniversary for Ohana Day prayer and worship service. We're here to celebrate the name of Jesus with the pastors, the ministers, and all the believers from across the state of Hawaii today. Lifting up the name of Jesus to prayer and praise right here in Aloha Stadium, the 10th annual Hawaii Prayer Watch, God's Ohana Day. Take a look at the sun, Hawaii sunrise. It's shining bright here right now. At the mention of your greatness, in your name I will bow down. In your presence be silenced, for you Starting off the year 2014, Pastor Virginia, one church, one heart, one spirit for one God above us. And it's going to be a breakthrough year for 2014. And I think everyone who comes here today is going to be blessed. I just want to say thank you so much for stepping out of the boat, for stepping out of the safe zone, into the faith zone, and bringing this event so everyone can worship our Lord and Savior together. Uh, we give God all the glory. Only He can do what only He can. It was a uh, God is doing coming. a marvelous thing in the in the Hawaiian Islands. The Old Testament is going to continue to do great and mighty things here. And yes. what a wonderful night! Amen. What a wonderful night! You know, you know here at the tenth annual prayer watch, we have Representative Joe Jordan with us. Joe Jordan, after tonight, what are your thoughts about what you saw took place here at the Lord Stadium? Oh man, this is this is so blessed. I mean, it's awesome. Awesome. You, you get you get into the spirit and you just start. 
thinking about where we're going to go in 2014. Uh -huh. Where do you go as an individual in your own personal journeys? And this is just a great stepping stone for a brand new year. Wow. This is awesome. This, this was truly awesome. And it was truly awesome to see you. And not only you had Representative Folly, you had um, Gene Ward, you had That's Bob right. McDermott, Sharon Har, Senator, Senator Mike Gabbard, Gabbard, Mike Gabbard yeah. and Donna King. Yes. We had everyone there. We just wanted to thank you as the body of Christ for all your support. You made a very, very difficult stand. But we know the Lord saw your heart. And you put the hearts of your constituents over your own heart. And that was a big step. But thank you so much. And tonight... I think it's just the beginning of what 2014 is going to bring. A lot of challenges, but a lot of victories in the name of Jesus. That's right. That 1 to 10 countdown started us off <laughs> That's right. right. You know, and we're all so honored for you guys to be putting this on to the 10th year. I mean, I wish we could bring more people next year. That's our goal. And, you know, we're going to have the parade down on Kalakau and Waikiki in July sometime. And we expect to see you riding in one of those cars, maybe. <laughs> maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Well, but, thank you, know, you once this, again. This is awesome. This is truly awesome. It's, it puts the spirit back into everybody and makes you Makes remember. you think of where you came from. That's right, and where we're going to be going. That's right. Thank you so much thank for you all so, your support. So thank you for much. coming tonight. Thank you very thank you, much. Pastor. Well, Pastor Kwan, what an evening tonight. I know you sit on the board of Ohana Day with Pastor Virginia, yes. but introduce these lovely ladies and their sisters in Christ that we have with us tonight. Sisters in Christ, beautiful <laughs> voices of praise, worshipers. This is Kawi Me. And what did you think of tonight when you were up there singing and you seen you seen everything from little kids all the way to tutus and aunties and uncles and you just see a lot of families here. What was going through your heart and your mind when you saw all of that while you were singing to the Lord? Uh, it's very humbling. It's humbling to see um, the work that God's doing. What is your take of this whole event here? What was your take on it? Well, you know, it's always a hard thing to get just your family together. But when the body of Christ can can set aside everything and come together, especially to set in motion what God is about to do in this entire islands. It's awesome to be a part of this great plan of God. Look behind us, what is happening? People coming into the kingdom tonight. Let all heaven rejoice as they come to know the name of Jesus tonight. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. That's what it's all about. That's what's going to change the state of Hawaii, the country, and the world in the name of Jesus. That was an exciting day at the stadium. Our next segment features Teneri Ma'afala, a true man of God, who not only is a community leader, but a man who has God in his heart. And here today we're sitting with Teneri Ma'afala, president of Shopo. And we're just going to talk story with Teneri and see about Teneri Ma'afala, the man. Hello, Teneri. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to come and spend some time with you. What everyone wants to know, Teneri, the man. Where did it all begin for you, Tinari? Well, first and foremost, I just want to thank you, Pastor Bula, Pastor Barry, for having me on your show, and I thank you guys for your love for God and what you're doing to just lift up God's kingdom. For what God has done for me, first and foremost, born and raised in Nakatani housing uh, for, for the earlier parts of my West life. West side. West side, and then the, the latter part up until my early 20s in Merritt housing. So basically humble, humble, humble beginnings. So after, so when you were growing up there, where did you get your schooling at? Where did you go to school? Because you um, lived in a few different places. Right. So Nanae Kapono. Oh. Nanae Kapono. Lived in uh, Waipahu for about a little over a year. So August Orange Elementary mm -hmm. School, Waipahu Intermediate, and then to Central Intermediate and McKinley High School. Tiger. Yeah, tiger. Tiger in the yeah. house. Yeah. You know, your family is known so much for the athletic prowess, you know, and uh, you've taken a different track, you know, a great athlete in your time. But now as the president of Shopu, you have a large responsibility for all the men that you represent. Yeah, it's something that I really take serious. It, it falls in line with what we're doing. Again, not to be legalistic in our religious beliefs, but serving those who serve the community, mm -hmm. protecting and serving the people of Hawaii. So I take it serious in that sense. That I want to make sure that our officers, their rights are protected, and of course their benefits, and they get properly compensated for what they do, putting their lives on the line each and every day. For the most part, yes, we've heard this said before that Hawaii is so small, but yet, we don't know everybody. Mm -hmm. right. So mm -hmm. for the most part, you might be you know, putting your life on the line for strangers for the most part. But again, the Aloha Spirit comes through. And again, just looking after the best interests of the officers and their families. Amen. You're a father. You're an athlete. But for you, yourself, what led you to follow the man? I want to give God all the credit, first Amen. and foremost, working through my mom and my dad. Mm -hmm. Mom and dad were very rooted in God. 
for majority of, of Samoan people, if people don't already know, back in American Samoa, Catholic is a dominant uh, religion in right. American Samoa and Western Samoa, but now known as Samoa as a mm -hmm. whole since the changes of territorial um, um, divisions and so forth and a geographical makeup. But my parents have always told us, no matter what religion, because when we're growing up, we're, one day we're Catholics, the next day we're, we're, we're uh, um, Baptists, the mm -hmm. very next day we're, we're Mormons, the next day Jehovah Witnesses. But the one thing my parents constantly told us was to always be rooted in God, no matter what, God first. So it started early on, but sadly um, for me in 1985, I was born again, but I never walked the talk. Mm -hmm. you know, I mm -hmm. felt good at the time, and in 84, my dad had passed away. Mm -hmm. So looking back, I was thinking, hey, you know, maybe that was emotional. Mm -hmm. you know, I received the Lord, I said the Romans prayer mm -hmm. and the sinner's prayer, and, and thinking back, like, no, you know what, it was secured. It was secured. Mm -hmm. It's just that I never walked the talk. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I like to tell people. And I equate it to if you know, walk the walk is when you read the books, mm -hmm. the, the, the Bible, right. and you quote scriptures. Talking the talk is the same. You can talk and quote scriptures, but the true question is are you walking the mm -hmm. talk? Right. You know what I mean? Like people yeah. say, is, yeah. does your feet match your mouth? Amen. Yeah. You know, and one of the wonderful things um, over the course of your career, many people don't realize as president of Shopo, that you still are on the line of duty every day. It's not you're just not the president. You still right. have to do your regular job yeah. and be president of the show. But that's more yes. added responsibility. Right. You have three lovely daughters. Right. Tell us a little bit about your wonderful apples of your eyes. <laughs> you know, um, before having been called back into the fold, I just took it for granted. I have a lovely wife of 26 years, Amen. and Amen. as a result, three daughters. And you know, I took it for granted. Just say, you know what, go to work, provide mm -hmm. for my children. But after really God opening up my eyes, I realized that it's more than just my children and my wife. These are God's children first. Mm -hmm. This is God's daughters. So it's precious gifts to me. So that's my motivating factor for what I do every day, whether it's wearing my hat as a full-time officer and a volunteer official here at Shopo mm -hmm. representing the officer's best needs. But it's always about you know putting God first and then appreciating those things that God has placed in my life, like you're asking Pastor Bula, my wife and my three daughters. So it's without a doubt, they're definitely the center of my focus as far as my life here on earth. Now, having having the daughters, you, you know, you have such a powerful position in the community, and you know, you're the police officer. How do you get to the soft side with your girls? Because I mean, when you're raising teenagers, I've got three kids of my own, and man, sometimes you just want to buck heads with them, you know. And you got to think about the Lord and what He would do, but you know, and they're girls too. It's not like having boys, you right. know. So I think the Lord put you through enough tests. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> you know, for the, since they've been born, I've been sleeping on the sofa more than any, any time <laughs> in my life. But, but like again, like you know, the, the best part about it, they, they they're the ones who give me peace. Amen. They're the ones who bring the, that side of humility mm -hmm. and, and the soft side, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. And and again, it shouldn't be taken as soft in the sense that a hey, uh, you know greater than the next person mm -hmm. per se, but mm -hmm. soft in a good way that it reminds me that a hey, there's more to life than just being a police officer, mm -hmm. being a union official, being a person out in the community. Right. You got to be a dad. You got to be a husband first, and again, just being humble that it's them that, that, that I work for each and every day to provide for them, whether it's education, putting food on their table, putting clothing on their back, and then more importantly, I want them to be who God wants them to be, Amen. and it starts with me, and I've heard it said best that what we as parents display, our children will replay, so oh, I just want to make like sure that, that you know, I'm, I'm walking the talk. Yeah. being living examples, Amen. being a godly example, right. and not just for them, but you're a godly example to a community, to the Shopo, to a bunch of men who gather every Tuesday yeah. evening, I believe, Windows of Hope, and how you've celebrated the one-year um, anniversary for this event. And I enjoyed being a part of it, because what I see is through your ministry, along with Keith Ewan, is reaching out to these men would you share with us how has god blessed you and led you both right. to spearhead windows of hope well what's so important you know with, with my position as a police officer and as a union official people talk about corporate integrity but people don't realize before you even reach corporate integrity if you have spiritual integrity based on the word of the bible the commandments and the provisions it'll help elevate your corporate Amen. reputation Amen. that we as, as followers of Christ and doing what's best for the Lord and His kingdom and for the people in general, we might be the only Jesus that they see. Amen. So Amen. it's Amen. important Amen. that we Amen. walk the talk. So yeah, with the, with the men's ministry, people don't realize it that a good number of the men that come here to fellowship, like we all are broken. We all mm -hmm. have uh, variations of brokenness mm -hmm. and strongholds and so forth and so on. But what's so cool is when you bring all men together and when men are so transparent yes. and so willing 
to just be mm-hmm. open, be vulnerable, and just cry with each mm-hmm. other and reach out and say, bro, I, I know what you've been through. Yeah. I can help you, yeah. and vice versa, because it keeps all of us humble to understand and know that, hey, you know what, you're no better than the next man. True. And I always tell the guys, hey, the only time you should look down at a man is when you're picking him up. Amen. Amen. You know, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. for I know the plans Amen. I have for you, Amen. declared the Lord, plans yes, to prosper you, not to harm you, plans for hope in a future. Amen. And the name of your group and the ministry you have is Windows of Hope. I just love that because <laughs> even in that in, in that verse, it, 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 I have a hope in the future, we have plans. Yes. You don't say window of hope, it's windows, windows. of hope. There's more opportunities. Right. And, you know, the few times that I've been able to attend, you know, it's just unbelievable because it cuts across every economic strata all across and men from different walks of life. But the one common thing they share, they all love Jesus. Amen. You know, and I think that's when you have an opportunity for men to come together and to be transparent, like you say, then that's when you start peeling the onion. Yes. And once you keep peeling the onion, when you get to the heart of the problem, sometimes the problem, the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart Amen. and when you get to that you allow them through praise and worship and to your various speakers you have come and speak it's a very non-intrusive opportunity yeah. and you see these guys looking around at each other go oh this isn't too bad you know this yeah. isn't too bad i don't want to come church but i'll come tuesday night yes <laughs> hallelujah yes. Right, right. so that's the thing that we talk about the three U's that we use to describe our men's group the first use the uncommon mm-hmm. so first it starts with us men we men gotta stand up we got to step up and speak up for Jesus. We got to take our rightful place as the heads of our household, Amen. as men, as fathers, as husbands, as brothers and neighbors. That we got to stand up and rise up. So the first you is that we men got to be the uncommon. We're uncommon to go out and love everybody, love everybody with God's love. That's what's missing in the world today. Mm-hmm. The only thing common today that we all know about that's again it's uncommon is God's love. Mm-hmm. God's love is that love everyone, love your neighbor. So we're trying to emulate that mm-hmm. try to be the, the visual of that so it's the uncommon then the unconventional you guys been to our service like you guys said mm-hmm. short message you know praise and worship yep. at first short message and allow everybody just speak yeah, sure. break out into groups of five or six and speak about what the message how it had hit you how it had impacted you and then share then of course we always welcome praise report mm-hmm. give god the glory never steal god's glory that's right and then the last you you never we're, we're the group that's uncompromising of the lord's love mm-hmm. the lord's um, um, word and his commandments. So the uncommon, the unconventional, but yet uncompromising, uncompromising. windows of hope men's ministry. I like that three U's. Yeah. You know, that re- simply reminds me of the scripture, the gospel of Christ, John 3 16. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, Amen. but have everlasting life. Amen. And what I see in this fellowship that I've been blessed to be attending for a couple of times it was uncommon unconditional love mm. as a man because at times we we as men are the called leaders of our yeah. home but who do we turn to at yeah. times right. we know there's a god yeah. but sometimes we look for the tangible things right but where can we go and this is a great support group right. whereas men from, like you said pastor bula from different walks of life right coming not only different walks of life different religions yeah. different aspects of life it's just open doors comment. you know what i found ironic is this is shopo yeah. and we have <coughs> men that were formerly incarcerated Correct. yes right. and we have officers and detectives here yeah. that put them there right but they all love jesus oh yeah Amen. and it's so powerful yes. you know because yes. god will take us through various seasons you know like i always share with Pastor Barry, it took Israel one day to get out of Egypt, but it took 40 years to get Egypt out of Israel. And some of these guys, when they come out, they're out in the public arena, but they still have some issues. And when they actually can worship the Lord with men that are wearing the uniform that have probably incarcerated them, that's the true love of God. As you see it, we did our job as we were supposed to. We all make mistakes, but let's rejoice in the Lord together. Amen. To Amen. me, that's powerful. Oh, it's very, that's, it's priceless. Mm-hmm. Again, like we always talk, you know, iron sharpens iron. Mm-hmm. So again, no matter your brokenness, we're all broken, but all different variables mm-hmm. of brokenness, some more severe than others. Some learned early on. Some just need to get knocked a few more times. <laughs> that's before right. They realize, you know, yes. hey, you know what? This is where I should be going. And like you said, Pastor Bull, it's so good when you can see um, police officers and, and yeah, former, former inmates, inmates yeah. some who just recently just came out and just looking for a place to continue that growth that they've right. learned behind bars. And again, like you, being with, involved with prison ministry is so powerful. So when these guys do come out, we just want to make sure that they stay consistent because that's the key. You know, you can be 
online when, when you're in the fire, so to speak, and then when you step out a little bit, there's a chance of you going astray again and then falling back again. But having ministries like this will help encourage them and then find a place where you can go and just, just fellowship. Well, that's what we tell them a lot of times is to get plugged in. Yeah. I don't care what church, who you are, yeah. but surround yourself with believers and right. godly men. Right. And, you know, it's like we tell them, we all, it's like we're all running a marathon race. Now, with the three of us here, um, there's a lot of people who could run laps around us running the marathon. <laughs> We'd probably finish the Honolulu Marathon in about three weeks. But, you know, there's some people that are really adept and real fit out there. But we're all in the marathon for Jesus, but we're yeah. all going to finish. Right. But we're not going to finish the same time. Right. Yeah. And it's not a matter of where you are, it's where you're going. Amen. And once they're in prison, it's easy if they apply themselves. But as soon as they hit that door and get right. out into society, right. man, life hits right. them at 800 miles an hour. Right. So Windows of Hope offers a tremendous outreach for them to get plugged in, to stay plugged in, even if they're not going to church. So just know they can come Tuesday nights right. and unabashedly share the love of the Lord. Nobody's going to judge them. Because right. a lot of times when you come out of prison, oh, they see tattoos on my neck, I'm a convict. Right. And just know, just come here, sit down, we'll do some praise and worship. Let's worship the Lord, talk story, right. and we'll go eat. Yep. You know, and I think that's a wonderful opportunity. You guys are doing a wonderful job there. And I know your numbers continue to yeah. grow. God has been good. I mean, we started off a year ago in November of 13th. Uh, November 13 of 2012, mm -hmm. we started with maybe six to 12 guys. Mm -hmm. But as I said before you guys here today, we've been averaging 65, maybe 80 mm -hmm. on occasion. And again, men from all walks of life, from different religions. So it's a ministry of all, gen all men of all generations. And it doesn't matter where you came from, what color your skin mm -hmm. is. Hey, just, we're just serving one, one thing, bread of life, and that's Jesus Christ. And just God-fearing, God-loving men coming together. Amen. The love of God knows no boundaries. Mm -hmm. The love of God goes across every boundary. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like the scripture says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, yes. there is freedom. Yeah. And truly, I can testify to that, as well as Pastor Bula. <laughs> being with you, being with the men, yeah. there is freedom. Yeah. Because you can see them who are liberated mm -hmm. from their past. Mm -hmm. And as they get out, and as Pastor Bula said, life hits them at 800 miles yeah, an hour. Right. This offers them a chance and opportunity to stay occupied. Mm -hmm. And we got to keep them yeah. occupied yeah. till he comes. Yeah. Because he's coming sooner than we think. Uh, we are in there. Uh, we are in there. Yeah. Tinari. 2014, many have said they're expecting a breakthrough, breakouts, great revival. What is your take on 2014? What does the Lord have in store, you see, in this coming year? Well, Pastor Barry, thank you for the question. I really believe it's time for men, time for men to stand up out of their comfort zones, step up and accept the calling of the Lord and speak up for Jesus, mm -hmm. speak up for our families, speak up for our church, and most especially for our communities, especially those who don't know the Lord. So I truly believe it's a time for men, for men now, there's a men's movement that's coming. And we men got to take our rightful place within our households and again beyond our doors at home in our churches. As we all know, the church is not just a force structure, Amen. the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So I think there's no better example than to see men speaking up for Christ, mm -hmm. you know, for their, their sons, their daughters, their neighbors, their, nie their nieces, their nephews and the like. But I really believe that's what's going to happen in 2014 to make what I call has been a swell. But going forward, it will eventually become a tsunami. Mm -hmm. a spiritual tsunami to, to wake up everybody and we've all said it the end times is no longer near it's, it's here. here it's Amen. here it's here well Tanari once again thank you for your time today it's been wonderful sharing your heart and I think the people of Hawaii will have a better understanding of Tanari Ma'afala the man so on behalf of Pastor Barry and myself we just want to thank you for today and God bless you on all you do and we look forward to that tsunami Amen God bless you both thank you very much Pastor Bula and Pastor Barry God bless you God bless you thank you thank you Thank you for joining us for the first show of Hawaii Sunrise. Wasn't that an awesome testimony by Tanari? You know, in each episode, we look forward to featuring local musicians who are making a difference for the kingdom. Here's a new music video from Dennis James Lee and Free to Follow. Aloha and mahalo for watching. There beside me, calm in this raging storm. As the seasons change, the leaves may fall, still you sheltered me from it all. All of my strength is. 
surrender it all to you all that I am all that I be I'll give it to you Faith.